The epistle lesson for this morning from 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 to 10 is the uh, text for today's message. I'd like to talk to you today about things that are set aside. Things that are set aside. There, there's both a negative thought of being set aside and a, and a positive thought about being set aside or apart from. When you are set aside in a negative way, it is if you are not needed any longer, that you are discarded. I, I see Coach Luke over here from the basketball team at Michigan Tech, and I loved basketball when I grew up. And, and I went from a small parochial school of 35 in the class being not a star player, but a lead player on the basketball team when you only have 16 to choose from, it's so easy to make the team. But I, I made a class A ball team in high school when I got transferred to high school in class of 749. And I, I broke my leg twice between my sophomore and junior year. And I knew I was gonna be really close to making the team possibly. They were gonna keep 14, 14 on the roster. My buddy, Denny Driscoll, and I thought, man, you know, there's a chance we'll be 13 and 14. Chance, 13 and 14. We worked our butts off there, and, and the cops started coming. You know, 80 guys down to 50, down to 25, down to 20. And the coach was going to post the final cut of 14, and we were sweating to and we went to the window, you know, the coach didn't have the guts to tell us to our face. They went to a window and you're looking for your name. It was there. So was Driscoll's. We high-fived each other. 13 and 14. Woohoo! The next week, coach said, we got to cut it to 12. We didn't even look at the sheet. We cleaned our locker. We got, we got set aside, if you will, and it wasn't a very good feeling to be set aside and kind of benched for the whole year. You know how it is if you get set aside, maybe from employment, if you let, get let go, how, how tough that is. You don't feel very good about it if you get set aside in a negative kind of way. Uh, the word on the street is that you've set me aside, by the way. I, everywhere I go, they said, hey, I hear you're done. You know, blessings to you. I hear you're all done at St. Peter and Paul. Retired out the door, out the pasture, and I thought, well, maybe somebody hasn't told me yet. So if there's a sheet on the door that said 13 and 14, I'll understand. But it doesn't feel good if you get set aside in a negative way. Relationships fall apart quickly in life because sin gets in the way. You might have people that you still have an incredible fondness for, a, a love for. And, and they used to love you. But for whatever the reasons, maybe someone doesn't love you anymore the way that you still love them and you have been set aside and it, and it hurts and it kind of stinks and it's extremely painful. Such are the afflictions that we have in our, in our daily living. They keep, they keep happening over and over and they are difficult. The Thessalonians to whom Paul wrote the epistle lesson for today knew what it was to be in affliction. Again, it was a church that he started on his second missionary uh, journey, and, and they were afflicted by many things, and there was division that Paul would deal with later in the letter concerning the, the not just the resurrection, but the second coming of Jesus Christ, and all kinds of questions and things, but, but when we look at it from a standpoint, they were set aside in a positive way. And that's really what I want to focus on today with you. We all have the times that we have been discarded. All the times that we've been set aside in a negative way. 
I want to tell you again and talk to you about the positive things of being set aside when it's God who's doing the setting aside, when it's God who is choosing. That's what Paul's writing to this Christian church at Thessalonica. He says you're being set aside. In the words of the epistle lesson from your sheets from today, he said, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you. That, that's a setting aside. It's a positive thing. Beloved, you are chosen by God. Those words are ours. In this day of affliction and sin and brokenness, God comes in and says, I've chosen you. I have set you aside for a purpose. I am not discarding you, but I am raising you up. Raising you up. When God chose you, when he chose through the ministry of the Apostle Paul and the Thessalonians, when he chose Paul himself, an, an enemy of the cross, when that took place, three things happened that are incredibly positive. Their faith, love, and hope. Faith sets you apart. Faith is a gift from God. Comes into all of the brokenness and all of the things where we're set aside in a negative way and faith comes in and says, God claims us, chose us, grabs on to us, molds us as that potter and that we can rejoice in that mold that, that like the Apostle Paul writes, you know, we have this this treasure, this eternal treasure in clay pots and earthen vessels to show that the transcend power is God's. Faith. You have it. It's a gift. And no matter how many times you, ship, you feel shoved aside by the world, by people that you love, God never shoves you aside. He's given you faith to be able to look to a glory that is far greater than any affliction that you brought, brought into this church today. And the response of faith is love. Jackie will be telling you about love incorporated again today. It's a matter of being imitators of Jesus Christ in living the faith. The Thessalonians did that. In the midst of their affliction and the suffering and sin that was their church, they reached out to all of Macedonia and Achaia. Why? Because they had been touched by the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be able to be bold in their faith that others might not feel set aside as far as discarded by God, but set aside, chosen by Him for the same forgiveness, for the same life, for the same salvation that awaits all of us to an eternal whole. Later in the Thessalonians letter, the first letter, Paul deals with it because there was a, a big discussion and disagreement about the second coming of Christ. But he begins the letter by saying, this hope is eternal. And hope is the matter, well, I hope so. Hope in Christianity says, I know so. I'm forgiven. Heaven awaits me. And while I am chosen by God and forgiven, everything about my life is a matter of living the faith. Everything. Those Thessalonians were like a beacon of the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that they did. And the Holy Spirit took their faith, their love, their hope, their everyday living, and used it to grow the kingdom of God. They had a love for the Apostle Paul, not because he was such a great guy. They loved Paul and he loved them. They loved Paul because he preached the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ and salvation that comes only in him. What God sets Aside. What God chooses 
You think of all the history that is in the scriptures. God set aside a promise from the day sin came into the world that salvation would come. His doing. His action. God sent prophets repeatedly to continue to carry that message and point to one who was to come. He set those men and those women aside for his purpose, for his bidding. God chose simple people, but that were special and righteous in his sight. He chose a young teenager to bear the Christ. He, he chose a guy named Joseph because the scripture says because he was a righteous man, and even though he could have discarded Mary being pregnant because he was engaged to her, he did what God said, as hard as that was for him to comprehend. He set Joseph aside. He set Paul aside when he was on the way to Damascus to persecute and basically kill Christians. He set Paul aside with his conversion face to face to say, you're my mouthpiece, Paul. Paul proclaimed that truth to the Thessalonians and to the greater known world of his day. And do you know who else God set aside? Who he chose? You! You! Every single one of you. It's amazing to me he chose me. I have no idea why God would choose a guy like me to be a pastor in his church. You guys are probably thinking the same thing, but it's... <laughs> You know, but God chose us. And he did so because of what he set aside. God could have chosen any way that he wanted to save us. He could have chosen any way he wanted to buy us back. But he chose his own son. His own son. And in the person of Jesus Christ, in his perfection, in his being both God and man, as he was raised up on Calvary's cross for the sins of the world, ours and mine, God set him aside, and it seems to the world to be a negative thing. Crucifixion? God chooses through suffering and death to follow it with resurrection and victory set apart that you and I are His. That we rejoice in the gifts that God gives in faith and in love and in hope. That faith is the foundation of everything that we do. That love pours out of us to bring others into the saving relationship that we have in Jesus Christ. And then in the midst of the affliction and all of the other crud that we are set aside and discarded, we know in our hearts 100% that God will never, ever discard us, that we are His both now and forevermore. It's that one time a year when there's a box on the altar this week and next. I'm not going to dwell on it. It's a time that we look and say, well, what's our, what's our responsibility financially? And we don't talk about money here. Those of you that have been around here know if you're a guest, this really isn't about money. I'd like to talk today about porterhouse steaks. Porterhouse steaks. For those of you who are vegetarian, I apologize on this this illustration. My daughter-in-law is a strict vegetarian and uh, she has taught me so when I have the students up for supper like we did back in September we had turkey, we had ham, we had beef, it was a wonderful meal, we had salad bar, we had vegetarian lasagna. So for those of you vegetarians apologize for this illustration. Porterhouse steak! I don't get it very often right now because the price of beef has kind of gone crazy and we eat a lot of chicken, a lot of chicken. We eat a lot of 
pork and other things. Beef isn't on the list too often. But porterhouse steak. Why is porterhouse such an incredible steak to eat when you buy it, huh? Got that bone in it. Got that piece of meat that comes down the side. Got that filet mignon chunk in the corn. You know. That was, by the way, my wife's not here uh, this morning at this service. Her dad would always buy porterhouse steak. And she was the only daughter between the two boys that were in the house. And they still give her heck today, today, to this day, when there's a porterhouse, because her dad would cut off that filet mignon and give it to the princess, okay? <laughs> That's the way it was. I just realized I'm being recorded, and she's probably going to listen to this. Uh, porterhouse stage, right? Set aside what you're doing when you bring your car up. It's what you do every Sunday when you support the ministry of Christ Church here. It's taking that, it's taking that filet mignon, it's taking the, the best, the best, and setting it aside for the Lord. That still leaves you a New York strip. Right? On the bone next to it. Great cup. Great steak. And you're saying, well, that's what I'm left with. Left with? A New York strip? I just want to tell you today as your pastor, and I have to remind myself today as well, that everything we have is God's. Everything. And so when we set aside the filet mignon for God in our giving, that first fruits, if you will, God also, God also expects us to use the New York Strip to his glory as well. Both of them. God had every right to cast me aside, to set me aside in the negative. He has a right today to do that because <coughs> I still sin and disobey everything he has commanded me to do. But God says, I chose you because I set aside my own dear son who lived, suffered, died, and rose again to give you it all. All! The filet mignon, the New York strip, it's all his. That's how you are. So when you give, when you pledge, give them the best. Give them the best. But look at the best that he still left you with. And how you use that in faith, in Christian love, and in Christian hope matters. <laughs>